Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining us right now on the phone from Ohio is Senator Rob Portman. Senator Portman, thanks for being with us today. John, thanks for having me on. All right, so this IRS scandal, let's get to it. Uh, Reuters reporting that all the employees uh, caught up in this scandal are still uh, drawing federal paychecks. Uh, we've seen the official uh, Lois Lerner, who is uh, the public face. She's still on paid administrative leave. And the former director, uh, who was relieved of his job, just is leaving office today. You know, this is standard practice for government employees. They get to go through these uh, uh, administrative leaves. They'll get, get their paychecks while things are investigated. But personally, what are your feelings on this? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's consistent with the law because back in 1998, there was a reform of the IRS, including some new taxpayer rights. And one was that if a taxpayer has his or her constitutional rights violated by an employee, that there is termination, not uh, administrative leave. And so, look, they got to investigate it and be sure that they have the evidence. But I think it's clear that people's constitutional rights, their First Amendment rights, in my view, were violated. So... I, I would hope that they would take the appropriate action and, and send a message to the organization. Obviously, there's a there's an issue here with the culture at the IRS that this could happen, uh, that supervisors would know about it, and that no one would see anything wrong until there was, uh, you know, an inspector general's audit. So, I, I would hope that they would take the action that anybody would take in the private sector. I would think you know, if you had an employee uh, who violated the basic tenants of a, uh, you know, fair and even-handed administration of tax laws. And so there's no defense here. These, these employees already have an attorney representing them. Uh, you're not concerned about that process being drawn out. You just think, bottom line, these folks, everybody who's been implicated should be fired. Bottom line. Yeah, well, look, you need to get to the bottom of it and find out what happened. And, and that's what these hearings on Capitol Hill are about. The investigation that the House and the Senate are undertaking um, are being made more difficult, I would tell you, by the administration, you know, not coming forward with the information that we've requested. Um, when we wrote letters about this issue back in 2012, as you know, they responded saying everything's fine, there's no targeting going on. And even now, the answers to our questions are, uh, you know, not the kind of comprehensive answers we need to get to the bottom of it. In fact, arguably the, the key person here who was the person ahead of the office who signed letters personally uh, that were uh, targeted letters, uh, she had taken the fifth, meaning that she had said she won't testify for fear of incriminating herself. So we need to get them to, you know, to come clean, to let the American people know what actually happened, who was responsible, why it happened, so that we can get to the bottom of it and keep it from ever happening again. Now, you've long called for a special special prosecutor here, and the American uh, public overwhelmingly agree with you. Seventy-six percent, according to a Quinnipiac poll, favor uh, bringing in a, a special prosecutor. <clears throat> and you have said uh, that we're not going to get these answers until there is a special investigation, a special counsel to investigate this. But it would be Attorney General Eric Holder who would be responsible for appointing that person, if I'm correct. Can he really do that, given all the other questions surrounding his office? Well, there are a lot of questions uh, surrounding his office right now, and as you know, in another matter, which is the uh, the, the phone hacking uh, and the issue specifically with, uh, with Fox News, um, but also with the AP reporters, you know, he's, he's in some hot water himself. With regard to the special prosecutor, um, I do think that we ought to let this congressional process play out. Uh, for a while longer and see if we can't get the administration to provide the information that the American people deserve. But as I have said really for weeks now, I, I am skeptical that they will do that, and therefore I think that a, a special counsel will end up being necessary. I don't think we should go to one right now, because when you do go to a special counsel, you do have the possibility that some witnesses will say, well, you know, because I'm working with the special prosecutor, I can't come testify. Uh, so what I have said is not that we should do it immediately. We should try to get the administration to deal fairly with the, the congressional investigations and with the IG investigations, for that matter. That's the inspector general who says he's going to continue to conduct uh, beyond an audit now, perhaps an investigation. But I do think that ultimately, as you have said, John, a special counsel is going to be necessary, and I believe that because I just don't see the... Uh, the interest on the part of the administration in providing the information that is needed. The special counsel does have 
certain advantages because it is a uh, prosecution, really, uh, a criminal probe. And, um, you know, that is different than what the Congress can do. In other words, they can handle a grand jury, they can indict people, uh, they can get witnesses immunity to get them to speak, which is often how you get to the bottom of uh, of issues. Uh, it's more like what a U.S. attorney would, would, would do. So there are some things that a special counsel can't do that a congressional investigation cannot. And, uh, but, and but, yet, in the, think, yeah. but in the more immediate Go term, you're, you're, you're advocating for a more deliberate approach here uh, it, it, through this investigation, let these hearings play out. Is anybody else in Washington uh, drawing parallels to the, to the Whitewater scandals in the Clinton administration? Some Republicans have said, some more publicly than others, that maybe we should just be a little bit careful how we, how we pl let this play out, uh, let it play out at its own pace. Is, are, are you hearing any of that discussion in Washington? Yes, I mean, I, I think we've got to be sure that we are getting the facts and <clears throat> that we are letting the facts lead us to the conclusions, and there was a sense, I think, uh, with that uh, Whitewater investigation that maybe Republicans got out ahead of themselves, and um, in, in a sense, the, you know, what, what the American people are looking for, you know, is the information, the facts, uh, that's all we're asking for, and I, I do think that there, is some, there are some lessons to be learned from, you know, what happened in 1990. This is a very serious matter because it has to do with Arguably, the department that has the most power over our lives, the power to tax, uh, as Chief Justice Marshall once said, is the power to destroy. Uh, you know, this is a, an agency that affects all of us in a very fundamental way. And ultimately, this is about not just political targeting of one group or another, but it's about a lack of fairness in the application and the administration of our tax laws, which, which we must get to the bottom of and we must stop. Yeah, and, and it's Friday, so I, and it's it's payday for a lot of people. The IRS gets to gets to access to our paychecks uh, before we even yep. do. Uh, and, and so this also yep. brings in this other question about uh, Obamacare and, and the relationship that uh, the Affordable uh, Care Act has with the IRS. I wanted to get your take real quickly on uh, what some people have called a fourth scandal, and that's the alleged illegal solicitation of private funds uh, by Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius to help support Obamacare. Can you tell us, from, from your perspective, what happened here and, and why this may be illegal? Yeah, well, interesting you mentioned Obamacare because one of my concerns is that the same IRS that we're talking about in terms of political targeting is being given a huge role, as you know, in administering Obamacare. But I am very concerned about this HHS issue, which I think is also one that we need to get to the bottom of because, in essence, it is the Secretary of Health and Human Services refusing to accept the constitutional role of Congress, which is the power of the purse, meaning that the federal agencies are not supposed to spend money that Congress does not appropriate. You know, that's the way our founding fathers set it up, and they did it on purpose. They wanted the, you know, the people's house, House of Representatives, and the Senate to be able to approve spending. So Congress chose not to allow HHS to spend money on some of the uh, efforts related to Obamacare. Uh, and Today, she instead has said, okay, well, I'm going to do it and privately. And if it's a governmental activity that she's funding privately, um, and by the way, the, the fact that she is soliciting money from health care companies seems to me to also be a conflict of interest. Absolutely. Is another issue. Yeah, absolutely. That's but she is going around to Congress to fund something that Congress chose not to fund that would be viewed as a governmental function. That, that does violate a, a, a law. So that's what she's doing, which is called the anti-deficiency law. And uh, the anti efficiency Act was put in place to avoid to just this sort of thing. So I, I am concerned about it. It hasn't gotten as much notice, and I appreciate your raising it, John, uh, maybe because these other things are swirling around, you know, the AP and Fox sure. News uh, issues and the Benghazi issue and the IRS issue. But it is, it is one that uh, I think we do need to get to the bottom of, and we need to ensure that we're not seeing at the HHS, you know, really uh, – an effort to circumvent the, the will of the Congress. So we'll keep an eye on that one. One last question for you, Senator. Despite all the stuff going on, and we talked about this, the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, still managed to pass an immigration bill uh, last week. And two of your Republican colleagues, Senator Flake and Senator Graham, voted in favor of that bill in committee. Do you support it as the bill stands now? Or what, what, what other amendments would you like to see uh, b before the bill gets your support? Yeah, John, I think the immigration system is broken, both the legal system and the illegal system. So I am for reform. We're not effectively 
enforcing our laws that we have, and, and frankly, I don't think the laws are adequate to deal with illegal immigration. And on the legal side, you know, frankly, it's hurting us as the country because we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not allowing people to have skills uh, that have resources to invest here to come, and yet we don't know, um, you know, who's in our country, so we're not administering it well. So I think there are lots of problems. This law that uh, uh, is being proposed that, that came out of the Judiciary Committee, I think, takes some steps in the right direction, but I'm not prepared to support it yet. And the reason is I'm still concerned on the enforcement side. I've spoken to uh, the people who, who authored the proposal, which is the so-called Gang of Eight, uh, on the Republican side. I've been working with them to see what kind of amendments could be added on the floor to ensure that there is adequate enforcement. One of the things that uh, happened the last time we reformed our immigration laws is we moved to a legalization but did not enforce the law either at the border or internally in terms of uh, what was called employer sanctions at the time. Uh, we can't make that mistake again because, in essence, what happened is after the legalization effort, then you had a, a flood of people coming in after that uh, uh, because they had seen that, you know, if you get in the United States, uh, you know, you can you can make your way to, to citizenship. So I think it's very important that the enforcement measures be in place um, as we deal with folks who are here. And I, and I do think that we do need to, you know, provide for folks who are here a, a way to get a legal status uh, if they go through certain hoops, uh, including being sure that they pay their taxes, pay a fine, learn English. Uh, and the, the question I have is, does this legislation provide adequate enforcement? I don't think it does yet, and that's what I'm going to be focused on. Well, what about if you broke out the enforcement part, pass that as a separate bill first, uh, you know, get that on the books, and then move forward with the other provisions in the bill, uh, you know, like the pathway to citizenship or however you want to phrase it, but do the security first as, as a separate bill. Is anybody talking about that? I, I think the House has talked about that. In the Senate, I think that the theory is that you do them together so that you can deal with the people who are here uh, at the same time that you increase the enforcement. My concern, I will tell you, among other things, is that on the what's called E-Verify system, which would be the system that employers could use to determine whether somebody was legal or not, um, it is not mandatory now. I like the legislation that's proposed because it does make it mandatory to ensure that we can stop the magnet. In other words, the, you know, we need to enhance border protection, of course, but we also need to be sure that we're doing more on the uh, inside the United States, after all, 40% of those who are here illegally, they say, are visa overstays. In other words, they aren't crossing the border illegally. So that that's my concern, is that, you know, the, the implementation is slow. Uh, I think the phase-in for smaller businesses is four or five years. And, uh, you know, I think we need to be sure that we're, we're not moving uh, ahead with the legal status of some kind for people who are here without putting the enforcement in place. And that's something that I'll be working on on the floor of the Senate. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, to hearing your proposals on that. Senator Rob Portman, thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure talking with you, sir. Thanks, John. Great right. to talk to you. And thanks for watching Newsmax TV.